Well, good evening. Happy Thursday. Don't you look nice? Your hair's down. How about that? You look pretty. Took a shower. Yeah, well, shower. How about that? Good deal. <laughs> you've, you've been busy. I've been busy. <laughs> you've been busy. It's been a busy few minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if you have dogs, you'll relate to this. Yeah, yeah. Don't, I always thought that dogs didn't step in dog poop. Yeah, right? kind of like they would, know, they would sense that. Yeah, well, apparently... <laughs> <laughs> our dog who's chasing his ball, uh, our big dog, who knows my dog Frank, would have guessed that that would be the one. He's a did. really cute golden retriever. Yes, but uh, somewhat on the mischievous side, mm -hmm. and and as smart as I like to say he is, maybe not so much. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so tonight. Yeah. So he came and he tracked in. He, tra um, yeah, he yeah, tra yeah. tracked yeah. in dog poop, but he he let David know that he stepped in something. Yeah. He yelped. He yelped when he jumped. When he stepped. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he stepped on something sharp instead. He. He didn't. It wasn't sharp at all. But but all cleaned up and we're ready to go. Ready to talk. So we're tackling a huge, huge number huge one topic. number one problem huge. in in relationship issues. Right, right. Number one. This Big, is the biggest right. issue that people have in relationships. So, so coming into a therapist's office or into a divorce. Communication, right? right? Yep. Yeah, we've got books on it. They've got dissertations, TV shows, documentaries. Anything you can think of, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours yep. have been dedicated yep. to analyzing, yep. trying to improve, yep. trying to understand communication between human beings, and in particular, communication between people who are in a ro relationship, yep. like you and I, like mm -hmm. you and I, right? Yep. right? So, um, with those people and what's happened in years and years and years. We're going to narrow down to about 12 minutes. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're trying to make it. Cut it way down. Cut it way down. Make it 12 simple. minutes, that's going to be it. Maybe yep. 13. Um, not including the whole dog story. So 12 minutes on top of the dog story. Right? Yeah. Okay. So That was extra. Okay. So let's, let's, let's hop in here. Right? Yes. So when we think about communication, mm -hmm. most people, most people think about talking, verbal. Yep. yep. You know, what we say to each other, how we say it to each other. But, but we were talking about this, <laughs> talk about this earlier. Yeah. And that's not all there is to it, right? So, yep. so, so you said there's a lot more to it. And yes. I'm ask you in a second, but yeah. I went and I did a little research and I found this very cool quote, which I'm going to read. It said, "The most important thing in communication is hearing what isn't said. The art of reading between the lines is a lifelong quest of the wise." Ooh. So, you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a as a therapist, um, we study um, lots of nonverbal communication. Right. And in fact, there is a interesting study in the nineteen seventies by some guy that I can't remember his name. You, and I, you, you, you could remember. You it was Albert pronounce. something with a big long <laughs> name. And so anyway, I mentioned a study that was done in nineteen seventies about communication, and what they oh. found was. 7% of communication is the words that you say it, that you, the words that you use. The verbal part. The verbal part, the actual content. And 38% is tone. What's that mean? You mean how, how it's said? Yeah, like if you say it in a mean way, like, uh -huh. honey, I think you've had enough to drink versus like... That's enough for you. That's enough for you. You've had enough to the drink. Ouch. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so the tone that you use, the mm -hmm. the way that you that the way that you say it in a kind way, in a loving way, or in a uh, combative way, okay. um, or a condescending way. That's another issue with couples is okay. condescending tones um, or sarcastic. Well, and, are they the same or are they different? No, you know, all condescending or, or, or no, is condescending the same as sarcastic? Or is that... No, not necessarily. Okay, so to, what's the difference? Because I kind of think of it sort of the same. Uh, condescend sarcastic could be I'm trying to be funny, and condescending uh, means okay. that you're an okay. idiot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. In other words, I'm talking, but, but is the condescending part is that's talking to you that that's conveyed by words or conveyed by tone or both? Both. Okay. Both. Okay. Both. Okay. okay. So yeah. now let's go to the big one. And then fifty-five percent of communication is body language. And so, in as a therapist, I've studied a lot about body language. So you know, you can tell when somebody's you know not open to hearing things when they're in your office like this, and they right. don't have eye contact. And right. so, there's various things that are involved in in good communication versus bad communication, if you will. And I know those... But 55% of communication is body language? That's what, that's what this 1970 study oh, is saying. So, right. So that so when you think about it, that's important because how how open you are and kind of what your body is doing is telling, a, you know, telling somebody whether you're open to talking about something or not, 
And um, so, yeah, so the body language is really important. So doesn't that like, so if somebody, you always say that you're a visual learner, right? Yes. So someone who's more of a visual learner is probably going to lean even heavier toward the body yeah, language. Yeah, yep. Maybe higher than the 55% importance or whatever the, right. the, right. excuse me, whatever the numbers yeah. are, um, versus somebody who doesn't, you know, who learns in different ways, maybe. Yeah. Right, or is paying attention to, another thing is that, you know, if you pay attention to the words that somebody's saying, sometimes you're missing, you know, just kind of like what your quote said, um, you're missing out on a lot of the other things that are going on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, process versus content. Okay. Um, and, um, and this study is, is saying that like the words are almost less important than how you're doing it. If you're doing something in a kind way or having a discussion in a kind way okay. and people are more open. The other thing is that the tone can help. The tone does two things. If your tone is kind and open and, and you know, and loving and caring, then you're going to be able to connect with people. If you have a tone of you know anger or again sarcasticness or condescending you're going to drive people away whether sarcasm. it's yeah sarcasm sarcasm so whether it's your spouse your partner your, your kid whatever so you kind of you know can get two different things with with okay. the tone of your voice okay. so you know one of the chapters in our book is it's not what you say it's how, how you say, say it, it. sure I so mean, that goes along to the right. whole tone I mean, thing that, that was that's my that's my take. It was oh, my yeah. piece. That's my your take. whole idea. No, but that was my take on. <laughs> that was sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't kind of sending with sarcastic. Yeah. Sarcastic. Maria Valeta. Hi, says, Maria. Uh, how are you? Hi, Maria, and uh, your mom. So Hi, mom. Uh, how are you? A few others with, that I missed because they scrolled through. So, um, okay. So let's let's apply this, right? I mean, it, it's easy for people to read about studies and what they what they say. Yeah. Fifty five percent this, twenty five percent that, whatever yeah. it may be. So let's apply this, you know, in real life. So, right. So let's look at this communication model that mm -hmm. we're talking about mm -hmm. between between um, what's said, what someone's tone is, how it's said in their body language mm -hmm. in a real life situation. Two people mm -hmm. not getting along, arguing about sex right. or there's an issue about sex. Let's go. Let's go that way. Right. Because you want to talk about that. Yeah. No, I, we, you know, maybe. Okay. okay so, all right. So what do you want to know? Well, Kim Williams says hello from Florida. Hi, Kim. Oh, oh, no. Okay, how so, are you? so how Kim could weigh in on this? She's been married a while. Okay, so so if we'll we'll look and see if she wants to. But let me ask <laughs> you while she's thinking about it, right? So so tell me how that might look in a couple who is having some sort of a disagreement about how much sex they have or what okay. they're doing or whatever. Well, the I'm going to back up and even say that people that are having trouble in their relationships are often not having conversations about things that they need to have conversations about. So if you and I were having trouble in the bedroom, we we're would, not. right, we're not, we would talk about, we would, you know, you would say, I'm unhappy about this right. or can I talk to you about something or whatever. But lots of people sweep things under the rug and it's kind of the lack of communication that people have an right. issue with. Okay, no, I get, okay, so, yeah. so God, I understand that. That's, okay. I don't want to talk about it. You, you, I'm mad and I'm just, we're not, but what's the, but show, tell me, you know, what's the other part of this whole thing look like? This other 93%, right? The, the. The tone. Uh -huh. Let's say people are talking. What's that tone gonna look like, or what's the what's the um, the body language gonna look like? Um, so Kim says she agrees with that. However, my husband would love more open body language. Wouldn't we all, Kim? Yes. Tell him I'm with okay. him. But anyway, go ahead. So let's so, talk about that. So um, I, I so I have um, a, a thing that happened today. You don't even know what this was, but I came in. I had come back from the beach, and you wanted to tell me something. And you were telling me about something, and sometimes I'll just kind of like let you keep on talking, and I'm not even listening. Like I'll go put something away or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I wanted you to know that I wanted to hear what you had to say. So I said, w "Just wait a minute. I gotta go put this back, and I'll be I'll be right back." Right. And then I came to you, and I could see your face, and you told me the story that you wanted to tell me. So I think that was a good demonstration of just trying to be available. In a, you know, for a conversation versus like you know, yelling from the other room or half listening, which I do, uh, you know, sometimes do. Um, right. But just you know, being present and telling the person like, hey, you know what, this isn't a great time. Can you tell me about this in a minute, or I'll be right back to you okay. and being available. Okay, I, okay, but 
I'm going to steer you back. I'm okay. going to ask you to answer the question I ask you. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay Say hi try. to Alvin Gamble. Hi, hey, Alvin. Alvin. Thanks for joining us. So let's steer back to, uh, it's not because I want to talk about sex, but because yes. I think this is important. Okay. All right. So, so what does it look like? Forget it. You know, so you, we're saying that 93% uh -huh. of the weight is on communication that is not verbal. Mm -hmm. And what do people fight about a lot? We've already talked about that yep. infinitely. We wrote about yep. about it for 40 or 50 pages in our books about their sexual yes. relationship. So what does that look like, that 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 um, non, the nonverbal portion of things? You know, the tone yes. of how somebody talks, yep. the body language. How does that, how do, you know, what does that look like in, in a relationship where people are not getting along in the bedroom, as you put it? Okay. So, well, first, for the first part of it is, you know, as I said, being available for a conversation. So, in, in fact, telling somebody and saying, like, there's something I want to talk to you about that's important. So, kind mm -hmm. of letting them know, setting it up, right? Am I answering your question? No. Okay. So, what, does what the, do you want to know? What I want to know is, I'm not asking, what I'm saying to you is, we're in an argument. Yeah. And we're in an argument because of some sexual issue. Whatever okay. that issue is. It's not is. enough. You're doesn't not having mean, enough sex. Whatever okay. it may be. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay. What does the body language look like, right? What does the tone sound like? Okay. The right. body language sounds like this, like I'm turning towards you versus like this. Yeah, That's what it I'm should listening, be. That's what it rolling, should be. yeah. Okay, like so rolling. this is what it is. Oh yeah, you want to talk about sex or whatever, you uh -huh. know, like, okay. 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 So I'm rolling my eyes, okay. I'm not looking at you, I'm turning away, I'm doing something else, and that would send a clear body message that I'm not interested in talking to. Okay, right? okay, and it's tell me about the tone piece. The tone is... Is demeaning. Oh yeah, time? you want to talk about this again? Okay. Oh okay, okay again. Just yeah, just go ahead and roll okay. it out. Okay. So now, and we're gonna we have a question we're gonna answer in a second. But so yeah. now let's switch to, we know what it it looks like in a yes. bad situation. Yes. So how how do you turn that into a more positive interaction okay. where we're where, with for two people? Okay. So first of all, if I want to talk to you about something important, I would tell you up front. Hey, there's something I want to talk to you about that's on my mind, it's been bothering me, you know, let me know when you have a minute. Because sometimes in the moment is not the right time to talk about something. Especially if you're really angry and fuming and very emotional. That's not when to talk about something. So when it's the right time, it's good to almost make an appointment with you and say like, hey, you know, can we sit down for a couple minutes? But you're not answering my question yet. What? <laughs> okay, you're not answering. Yeah. We're having communication <laughs> issues. <laughs> we're having we're going this way. You showed me what it what it looked like when people aren't getting along yes. from a from a tone perspective yeah. and a body language. Yeah. So take that same not getting along, but turn the tone and body language more positive. What's it look like? I'm complaining because we're not having enough sex. I'd like to I'd like to when you have a minute, when it's a good time for you, I'd like to have a a conversation I have something on my mind. Okay, okay, and that's how you handle me being gr me or our yes. argument. Yeah. Okay, hand on the shoulder, showing some yes. sort of affection. Yes, which is very rare, by the way. <laughs> yes, but I'm signaling to you that I want to have a conversation. Okay, okay, so okay. that's as simplistic. Okay. Now, if we go to like a second layer of conversation, mm -hmm. as a therapist, I try to have people engage and then have the other person understand and repeat back mm -hmm. what that per other person is saying and feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of a good, a very good, you know, the I statements. I know people have heard of that. Like, I feel angry, you know, I feel a hurt when you don't pay attention to me versus okay. you don't pay attention to me or you never give me the time of day. Right. So using the I statements is a very important thing. But in communication, if you want to have good communication with, with anybody, it's mm -hmm. really good to say, okay, so what I'm hearing you say is blah, 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 that you're not happy mm -hmm. with how many times a week we're having sex. Right. And then that person can feel understood, and then they can even elaborate well, on it. I have to fight you off. I would never be complaining about that. So yeah, but I'm just, giving, I'm just giving you hypothetically. Hypothetically, yeah, yes. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so... I think that that's, you know, sort of like basic one on 101 of communication. Okay. The other thing is that I have a lot of people that come in to see me uh, either in families or, or as couples that don't have these conversations, that don't know how to start right. things. And that's very difficult. People go, well, I don't, I just don't talk about it. I don't know how to bring it up. Blah, blah, blah. So I always tell people the, the communication muscle is like any other muscle. 
You have to flex it. You have, you to, have, work, to, you you have to work on it. Okay, so okay. some people are born athletic. Some people are good at right, sports. Right. They're good at tennis. Right. They're good at basketball, right? Whatever. They're athletically built. They have, you know, good eye-hand coordination, whatever. Other people that play sports have to work on it. They have to keep on practicing and playing and developing a muscle. Right. So I tell people, I tell couples all the time that communication is like a muscle. And you have to start off small. Sometimes it might be having a conversation about something that doesn't, you know, not like sex or money because those are really big conversations yeah. Our kids. But start with a conversation that's like, I don't, you know, I really like you to buy this kind of ketchup or, uh, you know, something that's small and just practice it and just start to do conversations. All right. And I want to ask you about that. Yeah. More in, in, more in, a, in a minute. Yeah. Okay. So we had a question about, do you think that, that women are better listeners? And I'm not sure whether she meant listening to um, oral communication or listening to this other 93% yeah. that you're yeah. talking about. You think that women are better listeners. I can already, I can answer that yeah, question. Yeah, what are you going to say? Absolutely not. Oh, and I would no. say, I would probably. No, absolutely not. You don't think so? No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't Do think you think so. they listen differently then? Uh, well, I think it's a big generalization. Like anything is a generalization. Yeah. So in the main, um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I don't. I don't think that that's as true as you would think. It's a little stereotypical, yeah. to be honest. You know, women are listeners, men are doers. Women, women are you know put their arms around things, and men are more tough about it. But, mm -hmm. um, like, I don't think you're the you're any better of a listener than I am. In fact, sometimes I think you're worse. Yeah, um, I would agree with that. Um, right, <laughs> you're a check mark. Write that down, well, please. But you know what? Wait, I would, uh, hold on, <laughs> I would, okay, uh, I got it. No, I would agree with that because um, what I want to say, <laughs> yeah. what I want to no, say no, I got you is that one. That um, I do it all day long for I work. <laughs> for work. Ah! <laughs> so you so you don't want to do it. I'm tired. I don't want to listen anymore. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it's you know, it's like I leave, I try to leave things at the office. <laughs> That's very funny. Yep. So was, you do it all day long. So when you come upstairs from your office, yeah. you don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, I don't want to do it. Anymore. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. All right. So, all right. So two two little uh, more areas I want to cover with you. Right? I would say women are better at noticing the nonverbal um, body language things. I would generalize. I don't. That. I don't I would say have that. any so, okay. opinion as to that. Okay, but I, I would say that women are better at noticing. I, mean, I think that sometimes, to be honest with you, I think that, that that kind of thing can be misinterpreted. You know, somebody makes a face, and they're making a face because they're thinking of something, not mm. because of what you're saying. Yeah. Or they react a certain way because they're not paying attention to what you're saying, and they're doing something else, and you take it as it being, well, what are you, what yeah. are you responding that way yeah. to? So it, maybe you know. I mean, like I have said, and this should be one of those quotes when you Google. Kim said, oh, yeah, he's a much better listener. Oh, enormously better. Yep. There's no question yep. about it, Kim. You will buy you a drink whenever we see you. <laughs> if we ever see you again, if we ever get to travel. Not even Florida. this year. But, yep. but, but I think, you know, as, and I think I came up with this, and it should be, you know, if you ever Google um, uh, relationships or communication between couples, they come with all these fancy little pictures with sayings in them. So mine should be in one of those pictures, which is no conflict was ever resolved by silence. Yes. And 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 so the nonverbal stuff which I get, but it seems to me can be misinterpreted more frequently than what somebody says. No, I how agree. they say it, yep. the tone of how right? The right. Tone. If you, if somebody doesn't say something to you, then you wonder, is it this, is it that, is it this? And it could be that they're just tired. It could be they're not even mad at you. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um so, so I wait, do wait, wait, wait. Kathy Baker says, my husband had a word quota, so I had to look like I was listening, but I was really watching TV. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, we get we get that. Yeah, I do a lot of that nodding. Mm -hmm, yeah. Know, look at the newspaper, whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I got no problem with that. And, and we I can't respect listen 100% of the no, time, no, right? No, no, but, especially with somebody who talks so much. Yeah, yeah. I guess so, so. Okay, so let me let me cover two more areas. With yeah, you. and then I wanted to say about uh, this. We were we're touch, we're touch our drink. What we're drinking tonight? Because we always like to tell you what we're drinking. So 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 I want very briefly, and then I want to get because we had a big question that I yes. don't want to I don't want to miss out yep. on. I say for the end. So so when you have people in a relationship, they love each other. They other they generally get along fine, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. But one of them isn't a talker. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really want to talk about stuff. Yeah. Then the other person feels the need to say, "Listen, we need to hash this out. We need yeah. to figure it out." How you know? How do you? I assume you've seen couples like that, right? Absolutely. So how do you help those people bridge that? You know, it'll work itself out. I don't need to talk about everything. Versus, 
we need to get it out. We need to flesh it out. We need everything needs to be talked about. How do you find a way to bridge that gap? Well, I think that's a true that's true a true collaboration of you know finding a middle ground, and also the person that really likes to talk about things might need to talk to a friend or a therapist if they're. You know, some people solve problems by talking it out and other people solve problems by right. thinking about it or doing research in their heads or on the internet or whatever. So everybody has a different way of, you know, dealing so with how it. How do you, so you have these two people yeah. who have a, a, a fairly healthy relationship, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're but, mismatched. But they're mismatched yeah. in this particular yep. way. Yep. So how, you know, what do you tell that, those folks when they're in your office? I mean, that, I, I'd be Well, a little bit of both. Like, there's a, you, you have to give a little bit on the end of, of, of being able to talk about some of the things. And then this person that wants to maybe over talk about things needs to, you know, find other outlets. So it's a really about, I mean, it's okay. compromise. Isn't everything that we sure. do in a relationship Someone about? Someone can have your margarita. <laughs> Margarita's flowing. Oh, okay. Whiskey and beer for yeah, us. Yeah, we're having, we'll uh, second yeah, day. we're having some nice wine okay. and yeah. Okay. So no, I think it's a compromise and uh, whether you do that, you know, at home and uh, on your own or you have to do that with a therapist, there's nothing wrong with that. But okay. yeah, finding a compromise. All right, trying to find, so trying to get that person who really doesn't want to talk, talk a little bit more. Yes, and the other right? person, the talk, person a little talk, talk a little bit less. So try yeah. not to bring it, make everything be a, a, a yes. significant discussion. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, so, um, and my mom said, my mother said, some people talk just because they like to hear themselves talk. That's certainly true. I don't know anybody like that personally, but but I know that they're out there. Yeah, we've so, we've heard about them, but we don't know. <laughs> okay, them. so let's let's just spend our last few minutes because uh -huh. I I thought this was a really interesting question that we got, mm -hmm. which is you have a couple who have been in a relationship for a long time, uh -huh. ten years, twenty years, pick a number, whatever it may be, right? And they have not had the, the five, five core, core conversations. conversations. <laughs> There's our club. Okay, they haven't had those conversations. Yeah, but they love each other. Yeah. Okay. And and while they feel that they're not connecting, they still feel connect, connected. That didn't mm -hmm. come out particularly in an articulate way, but you know what I'm saying is that while they're not, they don't feel like they're connecting, whether it's from a communication perspective, whatever it may be, but they still have this love There's for each other. There's still something left. Are those people, you know, do we chalk them up and, and, and punch their ticket to my office? Or is there something that you can tell them in terms of how to... How, you know, how do they start doing that mm -hmm. when they haven't done it up to now? And, and before you answer that, remember one of our first reviews was from a really, really good friend. Um, and, and I'm sure she meant this even though she's our friend, Julie Shirky. Now Julie Powers Gallagher, because she got married. Congratulations. And she read our book, so and she's she going to stay book, married. And she, and, <laughs> and, but what she said was that she had wished she read it. Yeah. 20 years yeah. earlier yeah. and then she wouldn't have gotten divorced. And that's lovely, makes yeah. us feel great. Yes. But how do you... You know, what do you what do you say to those folks who haven't yet had their five conversations? Well, I but mean, can't, but 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 the time isn't necessarily over for them. Right. Well, I think that we go back to um, it starts like a like a muscle. How do you how do you start to train for a marathon? You start so walking. Slow. You start running. You know, first mile, whatever. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like that, you know, it's going to be gradual steps. You're not going to sit down and have a conversation, a really tough conversation or five of them, right. you know, like, let's talk about this, this, and this, unless you're going to mediation or divorce or whatever. Right. No, I mean, I mean, you know, in, in a situation where, where, where two people still feel that love of each other, but they feel distant because yes. they haven't talked, because yeah. they didn't discuss finances, yeah. or they didn't discuss problems with their kids, or they didn't discuss one person's unhappiness mm -hmm. or their differences with regard to their sexual relationship you know what do you say to those people who who aren't ready to just you know throw i in say work on towel? it i say get okay. get our book or get another book um there's also you know webinars and marriage retreats virtual ones and real and ones that are you can meet if when this COVID is over but there's ways to start working on talking and communicating um it's and it's you know i hate to say this because it sounds like right but it's never too late okay right okay. i mean it isn't you know it's never too late to start something so you know our book would be a great starting place um but there's other great books too you know just to, yeah, there's lots of good stuff out yeah. there. i mean you know without plugging ours I, which i will just a teeny teeny, <laughs> teeny beeny bit is is that is that you know it's 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 told in real life it's not told in studies and in, mm -hmm. in 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 uh, rooms mm -hmm. or labs yep. and that kind of thing and 
And, you know, that's what we try to do because it's based on, you know, the kind of people we are. Yeah. You know, neither one of us particularly scientific, uh, but I think both of us have a, have a generally decent sense of, of people. So Yeah, we got an interesting comment. Um, is it? Yeah, that's interesting. So Kathy Baker yeah, says, Kathy. tell them to take a break. Mm. They'll find out that the grass isn't always greener. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, yeah, no, I, there's no question about that, yes, but it's not true. necessarily I'm looking for better pastors in, yeah. in, that, in, in my hypothetical couple. Well, Listen, if, let me just say this to you, Kathy. There is a lot of people that I see that are looking for different pastures and do think that the grass is greener. Yeah. And and they may find that it is. More times than not, they find that it, that it isn't. But what, but this is a different question. Yeah. A bit. Well, but I, what I want to say is if you have a communication issue in one relationship, it's going to show up again in another. So if you if you don't. If you're not able to dig in and have a conversation or you sweep everything under the rug or whatever it is, it's going to show up again. I mean, that, you know, that we, I see that all the time with, with people, um, yeah. you know, issues follow you because, you know, if you don't sure. deal with them. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, taking a break sometimes is, is actually a good, um, you know, it, well, it's right, not a bad thing. There's nothing thing. wrong with taking a step back. It's like anything else. Sometimes... Yep. You know, you know, in my in my business, you, when you're when you're in the middle of some sort of conflict because you're representing somebody, uh, it's easy to get caught up in that conflict yep. and lose a bigger perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And and so if you if you take a breath, take a step back as a divorce lawyer and say, okay, what am I trying to accomplish? And here's the path I'm going, and let's broaden the view of mm -hmm. that. I imagine that's kind of what you're saying. It's the same kind of thing. Yep. Um, I'm sorry to hear about your husband, Kathy. Uh, yeah, we're really sorry about that. I'm glad you're on. Um, hope oh. you're okay. So, sending, sending hugs, Kathy. So, um, okay. So. And my sister said different book. Different so. book. Well, we already have a different book that's being pitched yeah, right now by we have a second Julie book, yeah. Gwynn. But maybe Get we'll, to it, Julie. Maybe we'll do a third book. But anyway, <laughs> um, I wanted just to uh, shout out to the guy at Banks who recommended. Jim, Jim at Banks. Floors D. Hey, what about me? I got it. Prairie. Um... It's a nice rosé. Fleur de Prairie. It's Ooh. a nice, it's a beautiful bottle. And it comes with a real cork, not a twist off. Yeah, so, and it wasn't um, expensive, was it? Yeah, it was, I, I only shop for bottles that are under $15. That's my you. price range. You don't know the difference. You yeah, can't I don't, I don't know the difference. $100 one doesn't make a difference. My cousin Gary is a wine connoisseur, and yeah, he just, he whatever. dies when I tell him, oh, this is a $10 bottle of wine. But yeah. anyway, I love it. It's good. It's delicious, refreshing. Fleur de Prairie. And, yep. Like, like prairie dog yeah so for good. me of course well i talk and i've been drinking mostly cores lately but tonight i have a little rolling rock and sadly very very oh, sadly over i tapped this guy which is absolutely delicious uh michter's the sour mash whiskey which is smoking good and for the summertime really good if you can get your hands on it and it's maybe 45 to 50 dollars a bottle for those of you who are Whiskey lovers out there. Um, Kathy, it's not sparkling. Um, it's just regular rosé. But the um, I did have some sparkling rosé, um, rosé babe. It was in a can last week. Yeah, and that was like kind that. of fun. Yeah. So yeah, if you're yeah. looking, if you like the sparkly ones, there's rosé in the can, the little white white and blue can, rosé babe or something like that. That was good. Mm -hmm. But if you, um, this is this is very good too. It's not sparkly. Oh, you hate to throw that. Yeah, it kind, it kind of looks like expensive. Yeah, more than fifteen dollars. You so, should. You could have told me you splurged on me, and I wouldn't have known. I did. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So that's it. We said fifteen minutes had been thirty, but still thirty minutes talking about. The most complicated and most talked about issue in relationships. Communication. Yeah, we're done. You don't have to talk about it anymore. You yeah, can listen to this, play it again. Yep. All fixed. No we're problem. Done. We're so done. listen, a couple quick things. Number one is if you haven't gotten our book, I'm not supposed to pitch, but I'm pitching anyway. Grab your copy online, your local bookstore. Next Friday, if you're down Woo! in the Eastern Shore, we get to be live. With masks. Instead of virtual, we'll be let masks. But we'll be live at Bethany Beach Books in Bethany, Delaware, next Friday night, August 7th, 7 to 8.30. Swing on by, sneak a cocktail under your arm, yep. grab a book, let's chit-chat in person. And and um, thanks ev to everyone for the support and writing reviews and all of that. Yep. We really, really appreciate it. And we will see you next week. Thanks for hanging in with us. Communicate. Communicate. A liquor store is uh, is the size of Costco. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. No, we're happy to distract anyone, anytime. Kathy, you hang in there. Good luck to you.
Yes, I know my mom that it's August 7th is his birthday, but he's in Florida, sadly. If we could get yeah, you on a train, get you up here, then we can have it up here. Yeah, so it's, that, we, it's my father-in-law's birthday, yeah. August 7th. That's why yeah. we're having it, to support him. Well, it would be good if he was here. It would be nice if he was here. Yeah. So, All right, anyway, good night. Good night, everybody. Peace.